and I'll have to explain all the Christmas stuff. I don't know, because it's kind of happening, and I just coordinated that way. <laughs> and or, what do I it's wear? Not, I don't just decorate my walls for Christmas randomly, though. No, there's anything wrong with that. I mean, you did it for Halloween. That's, I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. So what do I wear? I guess we're I back know. to the Oscars. <laughs> changing, just keep what, what Changing my outfits on. all the time. Just keep what you have on. Okay. And welcome to that knitting show. You're Anne, so, I'm Erin. Yep. We keep forgetting to do that, don't we? Uh, well, I figure they can read below if we forget stuff. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here. First of all... Um, Hi, I haven't seen you in a month. Yeah, we literally have not seen each other since last time we recorded one of these. <laughs> it's been that busy. I think, well, Thanksgiving, obviously, but mm -hmm. then also it's sort of like this... You went to Disney World or something? Yeah, I went to Disney World. That was really fun. Um, and then you've had events going on that you you were at the vineyard. Yeah. And I was going to say Rhinebeck, but that was last month. Yeah, it's been kind of a blur here. Just Yeah. You know. This fall time, I feel, is like for fiber people. It's just so busy. Everything so much. And then, you know, you have a job and life and other Family, stuff, too. Yeah, and it's getting and dark early, so you feel like your days are shorter. And yeah. I can't wait for... December is it 21st or 22nd this year I can't wait because this yeah. whole the sun needs to start coming back already three more weeks three more weeks yeah so I'll explain this real quick uh <laughs> like I said I don't always decorate so fully for uh the thing but uh Jana and I Jana of the Pearl Together podcast and I are doing uh daily vlog miss we're calling it hand dyed December Cool. And we are interview we already interviewed a whole bunch of different hand dyers who contributed to the Indian Tangled December box. Mm -hmm. Um, which is it's like an advent box, but it's more inclusive. So it's not it's not tied to the holiday. It's just December leading up to the new year. Cool. Okay. Um and it's based on the state park or the, the national parks. Nice here in the US. And so every day uh we're interviewing people from that, but we have four other advents involved as well. So Ooh, that's a lot of whining. She yeah, she ordered <laughs> she ordered a Kwanzaa advent. She also has one from a girl in her wool that's like a traditional one. And then I have you know the 24 day. And then I have two traditional ones, one from um the fiber seed. And I'll show you the project I'm working on for that. And then another one from another podcaster called Late Night Knits here on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And she is doing one called the British Explorer uh, Advent. And so it's hers are very small, just little sort of tasters. And you're, we got a pattern for some mittens that we'll be able to make with them. And it's different breeds of British wool every day that's cool so yeah so i'm very excited about that but that's so we meet every morning and we talk about how things are going and we open our advent boxes and that's why i have all of this decoration going on something like you can't really see it, yeah it's everything pretty intense. it's all it's pretty crazy and there's Although, i have a swift over here that's fully decorated that when i'm recording you know we don't have enough room to have it in put the a picture thing. in because that's yeah well mine gets used every day on packing orders so i can't well do that, that's but. yeah <laughs> i'm having a hard time because my i am working on a project with the i'm trying to keep up with with the minis from fiber seed and they're all twisted hanks and so I've you have no worried. idea i'm like almost sitting on my hands because i want to just grab the camera and turn it yeah to show you i i have uh i wear it as a necklace and i'm just like knitting and like take some more off oh perfect and then knit your some knees, more, so. something yeah. So anyway, I'll show you those in a few minutes. But I want to hear, we talked about your shoulder last time. I want to hear how you're doing. Oh, I'm doing my PT. If you have an injury and you get PT, do your PT. So I can, look at this. Right? I should be able to do oh. this. Well, that's the not oh, hurt, so <laughs> the not hurt side. So. I was so impressed with so the improvement. I can do this now. Oh. Well, it was only like here last yeah, time. Yeah, that so is improvement. It's making that's, a difference. It's kicking my, it's kicking really my shoulder. I'm very, so. I'm very glad to see that. That's good. So anyway, do your exercises. Yeah, do your exercises, your stretches. people. I had a uh, I had a booster yesterday, and now I'm sore. But 
that's nothing. It'll oh. be gone in a day. I'm just whining, I guess. This was oh. just my opportunity. I'm going to say that's little. not why my shoulder that's hurts. That's not why. No, it's because I punched her really hard one day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they keep asking, like, what did you do? Did you fall on your shoulder? Like, what caused tendonitis? And Throwing hay bales. I don't know. That actually Do doesn't hurt because that, no? that's carrying low. Oh, yeah, because that's, yeah, you sort of use your body weight, huh, to get that going. But I also hold them low, which, yeah. oddly enough, I can carry stuff down low. So, who knows? I'm just saying I'm getting old and starting to fall yeah. apart, and I'm in awesome shape compared to my friend Tony, who we saw at Thanksgiving, and he's had both ankles replaced, oh. a hip, a knee. He's getting the other knee done, and he's waiting on a cataract, so oh. I'm, I'm fine. So, yeah, no complaints. <laughs> no complaints here. So, we are wearing lovely projects. You saw this one in the last episode. Yeah, but hey, it was festive, especially because yeah. you made yours green. It's beautiful. Well, and now we can, yeah, we can compare. We can have yeah. our so it matching is ones. Super bulky, fragilistic, expialidocious by yes. Marin Melchior, who has an amazing color sense. And I if you it. knew Margaret Laura of Morehouse Farm, she would put the most incredible colors together, as in things I would never do. Mm -hmm. And they were just amazing. And Marlin loves wild colors. So these are the two of the like bravest color ladies yeah. <laughs> that I've ever seen. And look at how cool they turn out. Because I would not have thought to put these two together, say, in stripes. And Marin said, hey, can you knit your test knit in stripes to see what that does to the design? Because all of hers were like ands. Well, did she pick the colors or did you pick the colors? I sent her a picture of all the bright colors oh, okay. I had and so said she did two. she did pick yeah them. she's okay. like those are hot they like, are hot I that? think that looks really awesome you get that reaction you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on so I can't argue but with questioning that. the or the question was what does it do to enhance the design mm -hmm. if you have stripes in lace and okay. I think it does a really nice job of accentuating that because you can see the you know sort of where the points yeah, it follows end up the it and emphasizes the movement of the lace. And your studs, too, because that's a long var yeah. variation, right? That's a This is a long variegated. So this is a Noro. And so my understanding is that they, they you know, they dye them in really long mm -hmm. things before spinning them up. And so that's... It had that look, but it's all, is. you know, it's But it's, it's not repeating. actually, yeah, it's not actual stripes. This was two, two hanks of mm -hmm. their, like, really big bulky yeah. stuff. Cool. Yeah, and it cleared off some space on my knitting shelves, <laughs> which is very important. Erin can testify to the state of my office right now. It's cozy. Uh, <laughs> and mine look the same. But I, I loved this. This was two full days of knitting time for me, and then it was done. It was super quick. I mean, it's less than 200 yeah. yards. And I was under, I was like feeling underwater with my projects, which a normal person, I think, would sit down and finish something, like, already on the needles. And I was like, no, nothing's close enough. But I needed, like, that feeling of being done. Yeah, there's no time like the present to start a yeah. new project, especially when you've got Absolutely. a bunch of other stuff going on. I have, Absolutely. I have that, too. So what do you think I did? And, by the way, this was the um, project in the Morehouse Merino flock. Yeah, it was community. perfect timing. And so Anne-Marie did one that was green and red. She's going to make hers a tree skirt because so that was cute. a suggestion from Allison. Yeah. So that was fantastic. So cute. Barbie did hers in um, a worsted weight yarn, just trying them out because we were talking about how, isn't this an awesome shape for a decoration? Can you hold up that side? Yes. Help me a little bit here. Um, the shape, right, could be a star for the center of something. And I had laid it out on my um, patio table and thought, Oh, that's really cool. What if there was a smaller one and I could decorate my table with it? So we were playing around with gauge and needle size. And then I thought, what if we took out the edging? And isn't that cool? Which now I makes me want to figure that. out how to make this a poncho. Yeah, well, just do what you did, but with your I need bulky. a like, stretchy bit in the middle here. Yeah, you have more, to lots more. But this as a you know centerpiece, it looks fantastic under a uh, white candle. I bet. Yeah, so, that's uh, how I thought about it when you when I first saw it. I was like, oh, that's like put it on the base of a candlestick. And I just put a like a jar candle on top of it and it looked awesome. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And maybe I'm the lazy way. Candles fit in candlesticks. I never get them to match. It's like <laughs> top of a plastic food container. They never match no, later on. I think so. that is gorgeous. So playing around with different size needles and different yarns. So this is our Morehouse lace yarn. And I think I used size Five needles on these? So if just you, playing around with if that. If you had to guess how many yards that ended up being, or or how much of a hank, like 
Oh golly, it didn't even like look a, like I used any. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like those would that would be perfect for the little bits that are done. Absolutely, you know, at the end of a project. Golly, I don't want to say twenty, but it wasn't fifty. Not much at all. Yeah. So this was not only the class that we did in the flock, but also there's a self-paced course. So if you want to go through and join in, that's always waiting for you there in your library, as are the modifications to make them in this size, to make Perfect. them in worsted weight. You don't even have to think. I put down the needles and the yarn size and off you are. And Excellent. still plenty of time to do that for your holiday table, whatever your yeah. holiday is. And if you're celebrating Hanukkah, which is going on right now, you can absolutely have them done for tomorrow because it really doesn't take that long yeah to knit one of these and well we'll see when this goes live yeah that's right. <laughs> so whatever your holiday is prepare I don't know. for next Hanukkah maybe. Arbor Day do, Arbor Day do a great one for Arbor Day I love Arbor Day okay well we're talking about finished stuff so yeah what do you have finished stuff <gasps> the bird's eye yes so this is the Lauren shawl designed by Gudrun Johnston who is who designs like Shetland projects mm -hmm. Shetland knitting projects and sort of gives them a twist. So this one, this one's a very traditional shawl. You have the center panel, you have the lace uh, edging, and then or the lace border, and then you have the actual edging. I would say what makes it sort of a modern twist is you get that. Um, let me come in closer. A you get garter. an interruption here mm -hmm. with garter What's between this one? the thing. Does this one have a name? This is this here. Mm -hmm. That's also bird's eye. So it starts. Oh, with bird's so it's just eye. not a quote. -o you start with bird's eye here, and then you have a garter portion, and then another repeat of the bird's eye there. Oh, so because it doesn't have one on top of it, it's just a little bit harder to yeah, see the... Yeah, it's a little different, but it's still the bird's eye. See, that one's like an almost completed mm. one. But I love the bird's eye. You knit little circles, and I thought, like, I went into this thinking there's going to be some sort of witchcraft involved to knit a circle, but you mutter things to yourself with sticks and string flying in the air. <laughs> Is there a meme about that? Totally magic. <laughs> um, but it really was just yarn overs knit, knit togethers in the right place. Mm -hmm. And you end up, and there's a very clear chart. So you just have to follow. And you end up with that beautiful circle of the bird's eye. And then... This edging was so fun because you knit this edging and this is just like yarn over knit two togethers Beautiful. and, and it just sort of is sort of like a, a sort of curvy lump until you actually block it and then it stays out into Isn't that a magic? point. So love this. Which yarn is it? This is Uridale's first clip. Okay. So what weight is it? it so looks... it's like a light fingering, I would say. Yeah. So it looks like a two ply. Two ply. Yep. It's a two ply light fingering mm -hmm. Shetland, organic I'm Shetland. i now. I have a whole, I have like, I'm sure lots they, of it. They gave me a cone. Guessing. They very kindly gave me a cone when I was visiting once and it <laughs> barely made a dent. And so I'm like, I can knit like 12 of these. <laughs> okay. My birthday's in April. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Abby, my daughter wants a, um, a veil, a Shetland lace veil when the time comes. And Ooh. I'm like, well, that's got to be in cobweb. And I don't have the skills for that yet. So the Uradale first clip is going to go into a whole lot of lace projects between now and then to practice. A dress? I mean, how cool would that be? That would be awesome. I think, I think you got it. Oh, we didn't talk about... We didn't... <laughs> we didn't talk about Wovember. We just finished Wovember. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about Wovember. So it's Wovember. Okay, November. remember <laughs> the month that if you don't celebrate wool all year like we do, then hey, let's take a month to call attention to it because wool is pretty amazing. Yeah, wool is amazing. So, um, November started ooh, like 10 or 12 years ago now as a way to draw people's attention to how wool is or how things are mislabeled as wool and how that really steps on the wonderful characteristics of wool and waters down those properties. So if I say something is a wool coat, then you start thinking about sheep in a beautiful pastoral field out grazing and the farmer coming out and clipping them. And that's spinning. so romantic, by the way. Yeah, that's very that romantic. That farmer is probably me covered in mud and whatever else I've yeah. collected <laughs> and some hay in my hair. And But we have yeah. that image, right? And so yeah. you think, oh, I'm getting this wonderful natural fiber. And then you check the tag and it's 100% polyester. And you're like, oh, this came from the ground and was processed in a refinery and was, you know, factory and everything and isn't going to go anywhere. Like that thing's never going to rot. 
you know, it will mm. never biodegrade. So when it's done, what happens to it, right? Yeah, uh, fills the landfill. So we had a, a month-long posting challenge called November, and that's how this started. It started, it started as a posting challenge and a photography challenge. So the winners were chosen based on their photography. And it sort of mo morphed since then to become more about information. And uh, someone asked, like, hey, who's doing November prompts this month, this year? Well, who started it? Um, I'll have to look. I'll have to look them up again because I'm an old lady. I have old lady brain, and I do <laughs> apologize about that. I Knit Sonic was one. And I know that for sure. There were two other ladies involved. And I will put their names right here as if by magic. And if you go to the Wovember page, wovember.com, all of their work is still there. Oh, There's cool. the essays and links to videos and all of that. So go, please go do that. It is so informative. Um, and so I didn't see anyone who was saying, you know, by mid-October, hey, Wovember's coming up. And I was like, well, let's do Wovember. So... Because Anne's a planner, even with, like, two weeks to go. Yeah, I'm International Wool just... Festival, whatever. I need a nap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I picked 30 prompts and approached wonderful people to be sponsors for prizes. And that all ended yesterday i've got to pick prizes today and let people know i think you should announce them here like just cut it in yeah this is we'll where just find like out. pull pull the names <laughs> out of an imaginary hat they're all ready to go i just have to like actually pick the people now but we've been we've part. actually been tracking your posts like who posted every day and do you everything. have people i have a person because i have not enough time just posting my own stuff yeah, I have a person who helped me track that. That wasn't just me. And it was and there were so many people. We had close to 300 people participate and we had 50 people who posted every day. Holy smokes. Yeah. Well, I was not one of them. And so I the, tried. The, <laughs> they may have been like two on the same day. And every, you know, everybody has a life, so it's totally understandable. Um but so informative. People were coming out with like, hey, have you? here's a product made of wool that I really love. Or here's a fact about wool that I just learned. Or here's people who work in the wool field that, mm -hmm. you know, I want you to know about. And it was just wonderful. So um, I highlighted some of those posts um, as we went along. And I'm going to make a circle, story circle on my Instagram called Wovember. And I'll put all those highlighted posts in there. But also, if you search for I love Wovember, hashtag I love Wovember, that will give you all the posts from this year and you can click through Perfect. and learn more about them. So, yeah. So, thanks for sponsoring a uh, thing. And, and we had You're 10 welcome. prizes. We And again, like Erin's like, she did it in two weeks. Yeah. I sent an email to 13 people and got 10 prize offers. So, people really stepped up and were excited about being part of Wovember. And so, thank you to all of our prize sponsors. That was wonderful. I'm going to put links to all of them in the Thing because they're all fantastic people they are and super wool boosters so doing so much lace and then getting to see some amazing ones because Irina Shar stopped by our booth at Rhinebeck with an amazing lace shawl I don't know if you got to see it but she put a picture on her Instagram no, I missed her I all I miss her all the time okay well we got to connect you too yeah anyway but it was such a gorgeous shawl and I can remember Margaret bringing a couple of actual Orenburg lace shawls home and like doing the it look it fits through your wedding ring yeah so I am now thinking about, okay, what do I want to do next? So I've picked out a lace project and I'm going to, of course, make it my own because it called for beads, but I'm going to not do beads just to, you know, move it right along. Mm -hmm. And um, started thinking about, all right, I need to pick colors for this gorgeous lace shawl. And how do I go about doing that? And another lace project just popped up. Uh -huh. I saw it. So another designer named Erin Krupp, remade by hand has some pretty amazing shawls and then she did this cowl so I'm gonna hold it up here and um so my another... flock said wow that looks like something maybe you shouldn't be showing us like <laughs> like fancy underwear or something I think it looks like a really cute skirt for a little that's girl. what I thought well who are you calling little <laughs> <laughs> like I wanted one my size I know well yeah but see this one would fit like a like a six-year-old five or six-year-old <laughs> not me as a five-year-old anyway <laughs> It should fit one leg of mine. Anyway, it's a gorgeous cowl that you start at the very top. And I thought, oh, how springy. If I start now, maybe I'll actually be done in time. Oh, that's so cute on you. Actually, this is the first time I'm seeing like it on me. That's 
That's really cute. Wow. And look at how like Go the me. lace allows it to really open up over mm. your shoulders like that. That's nice. So anyway, fantastic job, Erin. Loving it. And I just picked this color because like I said I was thinking something springy and mm -hmm. it's called springtime. And it brought up a conversation you and I were having earlier when we have people email us and say, well, what does your variegated yarn look like knit up? And Anne said, yeah. how do you answer that? Like, it, it depends it what depends. you knit it with. Yeah, it absolutely depends. So I thought this would be a great way to illustrate that because look what happened at the top. Ah, I get the colors to pool. Yeah, that's beautiful. Which is pretty amazing. And it, it just involves some math and some practicing to figure out how are you going to knit an entire round of the project in such a way that your round ends when the color combination ends. So this goes from pink to green to blue, back to green and back to pink. So I need to knit a round that is exactly as many stitches long as it takes to get back to pink. And that just takes a little bit of doing. And then you can see it starts to wander as the cowl increases, mm -hmm. gets bigger. So of course that throws it off. Right, and you get different thickness of stripes going through. Mm, based on, okay, it's not as much of a trip around up here as it is down here. And I'm thinking, wow, that would be a really cool sweater. Just these really fun passes towards the end. Yeah. And then I wasn't sure how it was going to look in the lace with it, you know, being stripey all the way through that. But I think it actually helps accentuate it. And I was brave enough to do that after Marin said, hey, can you just do the stripies on the, cow on the, um, Super bulky. Super bulky. Yeah. yeah. So I think that looks pretty fantastic. Yeah. And I have now thought, yes, it needs to be a skirt, like my size skirt. How cool would that be? And pretty excited about. I think that's very cute. What lace looks like. So that got me thinking, what do we think of this Ooh. for a big lace shawl? I think that would be lovely. Uh, because also the color differences are more muted. They're mm. not as dramatic. So this one's called Verdigris. Verdigris. And it's just very sort of... It's not called Violets at Dusk. No, but it could be. <laughs> oh, right. You were, we were having you rename colors, weren't we? So I was just thinking... Oh, excuse the dog here. <laughs> Guess who picked it out? Um, yeah, but just sort of like deep green almost a mauvey pinky there's some browns there's some blues in there so um and so the shawl pattern i've picked out just takes 880 yards which huh how like, long is that one meant to be ah oh, 880 yards perfect meant to be and yes. no ends one continuous skein how cool is you that you gotta love that so i'm just on this lace kick lately so are we gonna see progress on that next month you think i sure hope so okay let's see how my shoulder goes <laughs> Are you able to knit much? I mean, you've done this since last time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, just you're in, knitting just in spurts? Yeah. Small breaks. Yeah. You know, small bits, breaks. I'm doing a lot of ice. So, just yeah. rest, ice. Yeah. And then trying not to get too exuberant and do more. But anyway, <laughs> so I was loving this. So, all right. What are we going to talk about next? What else? What else? We're like, talking about finished stuff. So, tell me what else you finished. Um, I did actually finish. And this is, I think, just a super preview for what's coming up in the flock after the first of the year. Now, you don't have to commit yeah. to this big a production because we're going to do another Marin Melchior project. You know her as the butterfly, butterfly shawl, shawl lady. lady. And she's got some pretty amazing variations on that. So there's a cowl that we're going to work on as our class to teach the techniques okay. in small bites. Right. So you can do something like this. How gorgeous is that? Oh. I... Erin and I were talking about this before, and I'm. Can she's you hold like, this, this side? Isn't my favorite, and I'm like, that's my favorite. <laughs> my favorite's down here because I love the way the hot yellow shows up as the yarn over rose. And yes. So look at how drapey this is. This really is. Oh, this really is quite nice. So this is Morehouse Merino lace. Such a. Um... Thank you. <laughs> Just like it's just such Excuse an amazing <laughs> fiber to begin with, and then oh, look at how it. Beautiful. I love this. So now I want to go back and do the the regular yeah. one, but I can't. Erin, now I have to knit this. Yes, you do, and then I can't decide: do I need the poncho, so nice. or do I need the regular butterfly shawl, or probably both? So we're gonna tackle this, but as a cowl. So you have you know this is much it, of it. I was gonna say, is it this part? Is it's it's cowl? more like this part here. Yep. Okay. 
So you have okay, just a little sorry. bit and then the lace sort of... I, I don't often get to try things on before I knit them. So I'm just playing with it a little bit like, okay, this is how I normally wear my shawls and it totally works. Yeah. Okay. And I think... Now I have to knit this. I had so much fun picking out these colors because as you know, we have like, I don't know, a sheep load of colors to pick from. <laughs> and... Whoops. I lost the project. The, I started with a variegated, which this one's called um, Houses of Parliament. No, this one's not Houses of Parliament. This one's Grand Canal. They were all, the bunch of them were named after Monet paintings. Mm -hmm. So this one is called um, Grand Canal. And it's got blues and purples and this kind of orangey, orangey gold yeah. in it. And I thought, okay, in the original design, you need something that pops. So the gold just went really well, but wasn't the same because they're going to bump up against each other. And if mm -hmm. I picked an orange, they would have blended in. Right, right. So I didn't want that. You want some contrast. And then the blues were super close. I have one that actually matched exactly, but I went one shade off just so that they didn't yeah. run into each other and you would still be able to see them no matter where they lined up. And what I love is she's just making use of garter stitch versus stockinette in places to have ridges that stand out. And I don't want to say just like it's not... A big she deal. wisely chose. Very much so. Yeah. And I say the just part as in like anybody can do this and we'll teach you the short row part. Right. That's the, maybe the only new technique, but you probably know knitting and you probably know purling. Well, and this, I mean, I, I love the butterfly shawl, but I could see how people would be intimidated by it because there are so many mm -hmm. short rows built into it. This is like, you get a little bit of it up here at the very beginning. Here, I'll hold bit, this in now. You get a little bit of short rows going on up here at the mm -hmm. beginning, and then you have all of this TV knitting mm -hmm. that you get to do, and then you get to practice it again for a little while, and then you get to just do, you know, you have a little bit more in here, but so it's called it's the, doable, and you get breaks. And it's called know? the vacation butterfly for a reason. So if you're going to go traveling, I didn't know it's called that. Because if you're going to go traveling this winter, think about this, right? So at home, you can start this when you want to concentrate. Smart. Then you go on vacation and you have all this, you know, like beach knitting, pool knitting, wherever you're knitting when you're on vacation, airplane, whatever. <laughs> I love that. And then you return home, back to work, and you get to do all of this kind of stuff. But by the time that. you get here, you'll have known how to do this so you won't have to worry right. about... It's reinforcement. Exactly. You to practice it again. That is, yep, yep. that is a designer who is a knitter, for sure. She's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're adding an applied edge here. And this is one project where, you know, how I feel about stitch markers. But they are amazing landmarks because she's so in tune to where things need to go. The way the stitch markers are placed and move as you knit, mm -hmm. you'll find that they end up being landmarks for where you're turning on your short rows. Perfect. And then you know that. And then that'll really help with the bind off edge. And I had gotten annoyed and taken them out. And then I had to read my knitting to figure out where the points go, which I did. Good but job. it would have been faster if I didn't have to figure it yeah. on my own. And I just paid attention to the landmarks. So, yeah. I um, think I'm in love. I really, I seriously love that shawl. So how, so is it, it's four different colors. Is it four, four of the lace hanks, not those giant lace hanks, but the yeah. So the size it was I I needed um I'll have to go refer back to my notes, but I needed two of each of the main colors and then the accent colors. I think it was one of each. Okay. Um, but again, it depends on the gauge at which you're knitting. And she called for I think was it a fingering, so you could do this in the lace or you could do this in the two ply. So I'd mm -hmm. say, um, and she has variations on where you do it in two colors. Oh, yeah. see, I'm sitting here listening to you thinking, like, I wonder if I could do that in two colors. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, the pattern is actually so written for you to be okay. able to do it in two colors. I'm just, I'm an overachiever. It's a problem. I know that about you. Yeah. So, anyway, here we go. So, I do four colors, and I think I was the only crazy tester, because I happen to have four colors, and, uh -huh. whoops, of course, I, like, I didn't even turn in the <laughs> ends yet. I love that. Show a close-up of that right now. <laughs> Show... <laughs> She taped her ends down. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's really smart. Like, Well, I have to decide what I want to do with I it. Until I exposed you. <laughs> well, it talks about, and I don't have anything to hide. <laughs> it just doesn't look Instagram worthy, right? Yeah. So I am not worthy for influencer status. That's why we have yeah, Anne. I love that. You should totally post that. Okay. Anyway, the thing that I would do differently this time is pay better attention to when you're carrying yarns up the side because there's a lot of... Oh, can you hold this, please? Just help me pick it up again. This one? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So as you're 
carrying the yarn up the side, it has to be able to stretch along mm -hmm. with the shawl. And look how tight that is compared to this side. It's just a little... Because yeah, you're carrying on this side right. and you're not carrying on that yeah. side. Yeah. So you can totally tuck them in. You see a little bit of yellow across the blue. It's not that big a deal. However, I feel that and now that it's done and I've begun blocking, it's not loose enough in the carry. So I'll cut those and then darn them in. So if I was going to do that again, I would say just pay special attention to the edge carry. Yeah. And then the other thing that you might consider, which a tester did, I read on the regular butterfly shawl, was add an I-cord edge, which Genius. we know how to do now because we've yeah. done super bulky in the flock. Yeah, so. and those are so stretchy. And you nice can finish. hide all of those in the middle too. Yeah, so you, you don't just have... knit them right into the center yep. of the I-cord. Okay. Genius. So, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that. When is the class on that one starting? So you know those will be January. Date? So okay, round about. January. So yeah. we'll probably talk about it again in our next yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. Ahead of time. Yeah, we just but get start a chance. thinking about your colors, folks. Let's do this one together. That would be awesome. And like, that. can you imagine if these were like running around at the? I don't know. Do we have any locals like the Connecticut Sheep and Wool Festival yeah. or What's up Maryland? With that one? They didn't do. They do that in the spring, right? It's the last weekend in April. Okay, yeah. So we have time to do this for that. And if we don't, well, you can all wear it to like the spring open farm day at Morehouse when we do, yes. when we do that. That could be, it'll be our spring shawl as opposed Absolutely. to Absolutely. Oh, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself because we've talked about home decor with the super bulky. Oh, yeah. And we just forgot to mention because we kind of skipped over December. The December class is, I heard Creative CC talk at the Hudson Valley Textile Summit and say, there needs to be wool in every room in the house. Like, amen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So... <laughs> We came up with placemats, which you have That's probably seen us talk about before, but this is the December class. Not only is it in the flock, if you go to morehousemerinoflock.com, you'll see the class time. It's December 9th and 11th. We're going to work on a coaster version in class, so you have something done by the end of the night, and then you can use those skills to go make your own placemat. And look at, here's wow, the stitch, pretty. but look, it's reversible. It's pretty on that side too. Which is kind of amazing, and you don't have to tape down anything. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm like I'm storing that away for the future like I gotta take a picture of this but it's not quite ready scotch tape I love that that's tips and tricks folks I love it yeah trust the farm kids and MacGyver it <laughs> anyway okay all right so Ooh. I I said I was going to talk about what I'm doing for the advent yes project. yes please do show us because so, she has all these yarn spread out in front of her you yeah can't see it. she's I, been knitting as we've been talking yeah I just started because seriously it's 60 yards a day that I'm trying to knit up. Hmm. So it's about three, it's about three and a half hours of knitting wow. to stay on top of things. So because that's four boxes worth of yarn. Yeah. Speaking of overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> so I do one when you know what that reminds me of? When I was trying to teach myself to learn to like salmon, I uh -huh. thought, well, it's not really a comparison unless you have all of the recipes at the same time. So I decided to try and cook four pieces of salmon four different ways at the same time. Oh, gosh. It was a challenge, by the way. So then you were like, oh, burn. well, if I don't like it fried, maybe I like it, you well, know, it was like crusted with pecans or whatever. No, it was more like, do you sear it on the stovetop and then put it in the oven? Or do you just, you know, cook it in a frying pan? Right. You know, with a little bit of oil or do you bake it? Whatever. So I had to do all of those at the same time. I mean, time. I can see the wisdom in that. Well, just so that it's not like my taste buds on Tuesday, right, I'm yeah. in a better mood, so I might like it better kind of thing. Right. You know, I understand that. That's smart. So anyway, four is hard to do at once. So she's knitting four boxes worth of yarn at the same time. <laughs> just just the one. I'm going to put my favorite one... salmon recipe in the bottom, though, in case you want it, because <laughs> it's super easy. The other one is sort of on hold for now. I might, I might, we'll see. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. But anyway, this is what I'm working on. So this is day blue. The blue is day one. And the orange is day two, starting. It does look like a lot of knitting for this one day. Is, it is a lot. This is called the Unicorn Parallelogram. Okay. Designed by Stephen West. And this blue shape here is what you do every day. Wow. Okay. So, so he you... designed it for 20 minis. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have 24. He used 50 yards minis, minor 60. So you're going to have a big unicorn. So I calculated a little extra and I overshot. So I ended up about 90 <laughs> stitches. Uh, I lost yarn chicken by 90 stitches on the last row. So here's what's happening. <laughs> um, I have, this is 
fiber fiber seed and I love her yarn and I had some blue. May I? Yeah. Okay. Uh, your yarn. I had some blue that was uh, left over and from another project. And so I used that blue to just do the last because it's garter stitch. It's blue. It's going to hide. You know, this is where it is. You can't tell if there's a difference in that very last one. Yeah. Even if you point it out, it really. Yeah, it really. You can't tell. Whatever. Yep. Good. So I figure the cast on row always takes a little bit more. Mm hmm. So I'm doing the day two yarn without modification. I'm just going to see how short I end up on this one. And this one's sort of gray based. Mm -hmm. And I have some extra gray as well. So I know I'm going to be short on this round, on this row also. Mm -hmm. And I'll just finish it up with the gray. And then I can calculate how many stitches I need to decrease. So it's 24 rows. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to need... I'm probably going to end up about 50 stitches short is what I'm guessing. So if I decrease by two stitches, that's not going to be noticeable mm -hmm. overall, but it should give me enough to finish the next one. You wouldn't just change the needle size and block the bejesus out of nope. it? Nope. <laughs> you know me and Gage. We don't work well together. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to... I was going to... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a little bit of decreasing and cool. and make it be. Isn't that um, wonderful so. about knitting? There's so many ways to do different things that you yes. can be like super precise or super wing yeah. it and so it ends up so you don't wear it like this, it ends up being diagonal like this and all the diagonals build on each other. And you can see like you cast off a little bit at the end here and you or you bind off a little at the end of the row and then you cast on the same amount on the other side, so you end up with like a jagged going up and jagged on the other side and it's diagonal and it's going to just be a ginormous it's like i think it's 10 feet long oh my goodness with the 20 and i'm doing with, with 20. Good thing you have nothing else to do this month <laughs> yeah what else am i doing <laughs> so this is what i'm working on i'm very excited i'm hoping to keep on top of it and finish but i know i will not i'm just saying that right now i know i'm going to get behind it's christmas month and i am traveling as you mentioned and well aren't you like starting something else up again that thing you do? I do so many things, Erin. <laughs> so this is my friend Anne. She hosts a podcast called I Thought I Knew I How. Know. I think <laughs> I think it's coming off of hiatus. Yeah, so I <laughs> I actually <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> just I doing that thing you <laughs> um, yeah, so the yeah, the podcast is coming back on Monday. I don't on the sixth. I, I honestly don't know when this will go live. I hope it's before then. But yeah, December 6th, you can find it here on YouTube, but it's just an audio podcast. So I suggest that you open a podcasting app and subscribe to it or follow it through there. Yes, highly recommended. And then it just downloads to your device every month and or every two weeks and you can listen to it there. And I get a message. Oh, I thought I knew how. It's updated. And then it's right there and I can listen to it in the car when I'm headed to work. Yeah. And a lot of people found it uh, during November. And so, Very cool. yeah. And so, if you also found this because of November, welcome. This and is the weirdness that is that knitting show. Well, and also, if you're used to Anne talking at this speed, if you put your podcast app on a little bit faster, like not only does it fit in a half hour commute, but it sounds like you're actually talking with Anne because I think this happens with all podcasts. The speed and yes, East Coaster, we talk fast. We talk fast. Um, it just makes me feel like I'm listening to you, and I was. <laughs> With Anne's child, Kai, <laughs> on the way to the farm one day, and this happened. It just popped in, and all of a sudden, there's mom talking to us. <laughs> I don't know if Kai will ever forgive me, but <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. It was just like we were being yeah. watched. I, I, I speak a little more distinctly on the audio podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. And she's everywhere. <laughs> but, also, but also, so the other thing I thought you were referring to was that at the end of the month, I do the yarn stash, de-stash every year that other thing she does so I was like which I don't know what thing we're talking about so that's that's coming up too and the purpose of that is just like I don't know I mentioned a moment ago the state of my office mm -hmm. and that's because all of my fiber crafting through the year it's it's it looks just awesome it just sort of gets heaped and you know oh I bought this yarn I don't know where to put it yet kind of thing and so yarn stash g stash it's a two-week process 
to gently walk you through loving your stash again and getting everything organized again. And so that starts December 26th and it runs for two weeks. And it's just a step a day. It's very gentle. I make the posts on my Instagram account. I thought I knew how. And it's really like day one is just get all your stuff in one spot. And that like that's the level of difficulty that we go to. And then it's just very gentle steps. To you don't make me like heap it on the bed and then take care of it all so I can go to sleep that night. Well, that's, I'm very clear, like put it somewhere where it can be for two weeks because. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's coming up at the end of the month. So that, yeah. But anyway, let's go back. So we're all over the place today. Don't mind us. What's going on? I have one other, pro I have other projects on the needles, but I have one other project I really want to share with okay, you. Please Mainly do. because of the yarn I'm using. I'm excited about the yarn. It looks like one of everything over there. It basically is. So this is the sleeve of... You want to pass those over and I'll try to hold them up yeah. as you talk about so them? Yeah, so this is the sleeve of the Maya cardigan. And so uh, Jana, who I'm doing hand-dyed December with, is leading a knit along on this. And if you're, if this is the beginning of the December, as you're hearing this, um, you have plenty of time because this is a very gentle knit along. She's putting out the classes every two weeks or so because everybody's busy this time of year. Mm -hmm. So this is my sleeve. It's an Aaron Waite cardigan designed by Helene Magnuson. What Aaron Waite. Ah, oh, Aaron. Different spelling. <laughs> That's but funny. A nice I like how Aaron. people pronounce those. How do you say it? Aaron. Aaron. Also, Aaron? but like versus Aaron. Aaron. That it's is such a New England way to say Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> we once at when I was new at my first job, uh -huh. there was an Aaron and an Aaron, and not every accent can pronounce the difference I between didn't know you pronounced Aaron it that and way. Aaron. I've been saying Aaron this whole time rather than Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> you can just think of me as the kind of yarn. It's also like the head of That's wheat right. pronounced in German. The first time yeah, I please. was the first. Ooh, the first time I was in the UK, people would be like, "Your name's Ian." <laughs> and I'd be like, it's Anne. Ian? Like, they couldn't hear the difference between Ian and Anne. And they're like, why do you have a boy's name? What's Ian? Is that a girl's name in the U.S.? And I'm like, that's not my name. My name's Anne. A-N-N-E. It's not. It, yeah. But there it's on. on. Anyway, I'm knitting this. I wasn't. She's on. <laughs> I am on. <laughs> I wasn't going to knit this because. <laughs> it's pink. <laughs> I like pink. You usually don't pink. I usually don't pink, but I That's do, all I, I was... I'll tell you about this pink in a minute. Um it's I'm knitting it because it's Aaron Waite and so it's a little quicker, you know. Um but and also I need to clear out some room in my stash. So I was like, here's an opportunity to use up some Aaron Waite yarn odds and ends mm -hmm. because it it only takes like a few balls of each. Cool. So I told myself I'm going to stash dive if I find what I need. I'll knit the sweater, and I found what I needed. It's like so. the knitting version of Chopped. Yes. <laughs> Supermarket sweep. <laughs> Just no, no, there you can stash. grab whatever you want. Doesn't oh, that's chopped? true. Chopped, chopped is you have like, to yeah. use what's in the fridge. Yeah, it's what's there. Yeah. You have shallots. That's what I did. And <laughs> hot dogs. And, and mustard. Pistachio ice cream. <laughs> that sounds amazing. No, don't do that. <laughs> so uh, very, you know, a little bit of color work. And then large sections of TV knitting in one color. And so um, what I came up with, now this was written for, lo, plo, not Plotolopi, Light Lopi, which is the Aaron. Uh, I didn't have any of that. I didn't have enough of any of that. And okay. there's a shortage right now. I'm trying to guess which one she's going to talk about first, so I pick it up. So you grab the right one. Um, there's this shortage of Lopi right now because, uh, because of the supply chain, but also the Lopi people had problems with one of their machines and because of covid they couldn't get it repaired and so they're like down a machine and so there's like seriously a lopi shortage in the world and so i couldn't find i i, I knew i was anyway but if i had real, the stash i was going to use it so it is a real thing though in yeah. terms of everybody's tired of hearing about it and my sister's moving internationally right now, and they're preparing her to expect that it's going to be three months before she gets her bed. Well, even on a good, even good, it was like, two, I think it was two months for us yeah. when we moved, and that was normal. I mean, and and it's, you know, of course you can pay for expediting, but when the, the highway is so full of stuff, you just right. can't fit any more through it. Right. And if it requires a part that needs to come from somewhere that can't make it because of whatever 
their input yeah in availability is right like now. it just it yeah. snowballs so everybody's got to be patient. patient yep all right so four very different yarns the first one let's go with the plotolope so this is plotolope this is unspun lope and in order to get to light lope i have to double it so i'm using a strand from the outside strand from the inside and this is all i have but that was a perfect amount just for this little gray this is the only place that's used in the sweater is here on the sleeves and in the yoke there's no large chunks of it. So I was like, perfect. One partially used plotolope. Then Got what are you going to do with the rest of it? I hope I don't have very much of it left. We'll see. Hmm. Okay. The Bonk, next one... Uh -huh. <laughs> the next one is the black, right? So I got this on sale when I was in Shetland. They had mountains of it. They had a huge basket of it for two pounds for... Two pounds for a ball. How many different languages is this in? I don't know. They go all over. British. So for a while, I was like, every time I went into Jameson and Smith on that trip, I would just be like, okay, I'll get one. Okay, I'll get one. And then, and they and had the classes so cool. there. So <laughs> yeah. And finally at the end, there were like six left and I was like, just give them to me, you know, cause two pounds for that. I was like, yeah, awesome. So, but I didn't have a plan for it. So now that's going to take like four of those. So that's those. Which is, hold on. Shetland. Hold on. 96 meters, 105 yards. Yep. So only 400. Yeah, I think only four. It might, I have like 14 of them. Though. No, I'm just saying for yeah, a but like grown up size sweater, yeah. there's so only. So the two sleeves and then sort of like right here on the okay. body. That just didn't seem like a lot of yarn for a whole sweater. Yeah, right? It's airy and it's gone so quick. This has a story. I'm quick in a good way. That is, that is Gulf Coast Native that I got with the Shave em to Save em project. Cool. So I looked up Gulf, very, very. Gulf Coast Native today, and they were they originated around the Gulf Coast of the United States. Mm -hmm. They were brought over by the Spanish in the 1500s, and they don't know the exact genetic uh, start blend, starting blend of them, but they know that they brought over a lot of the churro breed. Mm. So they think that that's sort of the base of them. But if you feel the yarn, it doesn't feel coarse like a churro. It's, no, I was it's actually just, quite like, nice. everything else here. And so they think that some sort of pre-merino pre was blended into them as well. Because it's actually a fairly comfortable fiber to use. So it is this color. It came to me like this color. But it ended up that color because of Wilton Food Dyes. And you can see that it has a lot of variation in it. And that was not on purpose. The dye shocked. Failing on my job here. The dye shocked when I put it in the pot. And so I ended up with purple and red. Awesome. But it ended up looking so cool. And then as it's knitting up. Beautiful. I really like how that's turning out. Me so too. that's great. And then the last wait, wait. one. Okay. I'm taking this one too. Because I just wanted one. to see what the other tag said. It's because, the same. Oh, that's not. I was hoping it was two. Anyway, so. This is, I'm going to read the tag straight up, yep. hand spun texel cross. <gasps> we used to raise texels. Did you? Yes. They are fun and hard to shear. <laughs> and this was from a lovely ram named Dick. Isn't that hilarious? You get the name. You get his name. Mm -hmm. And I found this when Adam and I first drove the Highland 500, which takes you around the coast of Scotland, of northern Scotland. And we stopped at a convenience store. How convenient is that? And this was for sale in the convenience store on the back wall. There were some like sort of Scotland, like, you know, I've been to Scotland. And then there were like four balls of these. And uh, it's hand spun. There's a lot of vegetable matter in it. And so I've been you know, picking real. it out. Yeah, I've been picking it out as I go. Um, hand wound. Wow. Yeah. It's so like, it's so special to me. I just absolutely love this. And I finally ramp. found... It smells rare. Like, okay, that's a... Can maybe you smell a, a boy? <laughs> weird farm kid stuff, but just little nuances of... It smells like the you can smell the testosterone in there. Mm. Um, so I was very happy because I bought this. I didn't know how I was going to use it, but how can you pass that up? You know, in a convenience store in Scotland, in the middle of nowhere, and you come across hand spun yarn <laughs> from a local sheep. And so I picked up all of the ones from my friend Dick. 
Um, there were a few other named ones there too, but I was just like, I'll just get all of these ones. And yeah, I went in to get a soda while Adam filled up the car and I came out with yarn and he was like, I'm not even surprised. I'm not even surprised. Awesome. So okay. that's, so that's here. And then also it's on the yoke part and then there'll be a little, there's this patterning also happens on the bottom. So you have the bottom, you have dark, and then you have the yoke oh. that, and the yoke and the bottom are both. Can you hold that up close to that. the camera? Because I want people to see how this yarn, which is hand spun thick thin, yes, is knit up. It doesn't really look like that. No, it looks. It balances like itself. It, yeah, you can it see looks, there's one strip here that looks a little bigger than the rest. Picky, picky. But right, but the rest the, of it, it's they these four yarns as different as they look in their how they are put up are playing so nice together they totally work together and I did um I did not swatch but I told myself I was going to start I was just going to start and see mm, you sorry. know yeah <laughs> <laughs> see if see if it worked and oh actually I lied I tell an absolute lie I actually have a story about swatching for this because I totally swatched for this sorry I am a liar uh so I'm just worried about you <laughs> So Jana created like a little swatch project and I was like, okay, I'll do the swatch because, and partly because they are four so very different yarns. Otherwise I would not because anyway. Uh, so I did the swatch two sizes bigger, which is how I always have to do it. I always have to go up two sizes and it was way, I was, did not get anywhere near what I needed to have. Hmm. And because I always have to go up, I thought, well, I got to go up. I didn't even like think through it. You know, it's like, I didn't get gauge. I got to go up. Well, I was under on my stitches. Ooh, so of so course I needed to go down. So I went up and was swatching and I got about halfway through the swatch and I was like, what am I doing? Like, come on, Anne, do the thing. It's so rare that I have to go down. So I actually ended up going down a size in order to get swatch. I know. Wow. I never have to go down. Usually we meet in the middle. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah, because you have to go down, I have to go up. Wow. And this time that is not what happened. So you I was totally to find it this sweater. I don't know. But I'm almost done. I have about have about a half inch. I have like two more rounds and then and then the sleeve is done. And I get hmm. to do another one. I like the sleeves first. It's very quick. Yeah, so it's a bottom up sweater. Mm -hmm. So you knit the sleeves up to about the fullest mm -hmm. part of your bust. So that's how you can size it. And then you knit the bottom up to that point and then you start knitting all the way yeah. around to do Excellent. the, to do, I smacked my mic, sorry. You do all the way around to bring up the yoke. I just realized I might've covered mine up and I might be muffly. Ah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe we redo this whole episode, I don't know. <laughs> you can dress me up, but. Anyway, so those are the two things, the unicorn parallelogram, the Maya sweater. The Maya sweater I'll probably be working on next month too, so. We'll see. All right. Yeah. So you kind of caught me at a like, okay, I'm resting a little bit. You saw the cabin last time. I've made a little bit of progress on that. Of course, it's at home in the knitting bag. Yeah, you forgot. That's okay. So that was all I forgot Forgetting today. I'm happens. doing okay. Yeah. Man, December. It's crazy. Mm. End of fall. Crazy. Hard to believe it's here already. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. You have more stuff coming up too. Tell us about what you have coming. I've like shared what I'm doing all through this episode. Well, I kind of think we talked. You have more stuff coming up. Well, we talked about it a bit already right so unless she's doing the thing that I forgot that I'm doing right but the <laughs> classes in the flock we talked about the place oh, yeah we talked about yep yep and right. we talked about the butterflies because we're going to tackle short rows in January so yep. if you're looking for a new year new technique you can jump right into the big butterfly shawls or do the cowl with us because it only takes two skeins it'll be fantastic mm -hmm. for if you want to grab a mini um you have a hand dyed skein I'm you know I'm a fan of one variegated one solid Works out beautifully. You can change as many colors yeah. as you want. I think it'd be actually a fantastic project if you want to use up odds and ends, too. Uh, You're going to be in person, though, too. Yes. So we're going to do um, Lost Acres Vineyard in North Granby, Connecticut. Such an awesome place to come and it's beautiful. sit and hang yeah. out. And we actually met in person there, I think. Is that where? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. We met. We, we did meet there. About this time of year. I think it was the Thanksgiving-ish market. They do some amazing farmer's markets. Yeah. They do... Um, then music on Sunday afternoon. So we'll do two classes on the 12th and the 19th of December. And then we'll pick them back up again in the spring 
So where if, do people find out about that? On your website or on their website? I'll have everybody go right to morehousefarm.com so you can find everything in one place. And uh, if you're a flock member and you want to come join us, of course, you're welcome. That's all going to be part of it because you're going to take your class however and wherever you want to. And oh, awesome. And if you're going to join us for the class, then you'll also get a trial in the flock too. So Perfect. Yeah. That's so I hope perfect. to see some of you there because it's just kind of an awesome place to... It is a beautiful spot. It's, I mean, it's a vineyard in the woods in a really cool building. And the owners okay. are super cool. One, yeah. Kevin is the winemaker, mm -hmm. and Michelle has her horses there, and they're just such a neat couple. And this was their passion after they did other things. So they started this business from yeah. scratch, what, five, six years ago, I think. And, yeah. like, wine. not every little vineyard, like, concentrates on how the wine is made. But they spent the first year getting the soil ready because the soil mm -hmm. was not... I want to say it, it was, well, it was partly forest and then it was something else. I want to think it had been an apple orchard, maybe? That makes sense because you go further up the road and there's the apple mm. orchards. And that was just the kind of agriculture that was yeah. prevalent in the in this area since, you know, the 1800s. They would talk about how people that wanted to do nothing to do with rules would head for the hills and make their own hard cider. <laughs> kind of an <Our> independent, <laughs> free-spirited bunch, those Yankees. Western Massachusetts. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so... Or Connecticut. Sorry, I guess we're in Connecticut. Sorry. Well, we're close. Western and then, Connecticut. <laughs> well, and then we'll have that discussion about the surveyors and what's the real story and why is there a notch out of... Yeah, oh, Why is there a notch out of Connecticut? Uh, yeah. We'll get to that in another episode. Um, anyway, so Kevin and Michelle spent the time making the soil amendments that they needed to that would support vineyard uh -huh. soil health and the vine health. And in doing that, every, you know, there's a lot of like, oh, we should plant the vines first because it's going to take a while before they yield grapes. But by doing that, they actually saved themselves quite a bit of time because the vines had everything they needed to be healthy and grow vigorously. And, and then they, they just do it. making their own wines right away. And, you know, just try tasting, see what you like. Yeah. I, I'm very impressed by them. And everything that they do so check it out come visit awesome. and if you're you know within a couple hour ride it's a pretty ride it really is it's easy it's to get to ride. and um, yeah. I think worth the drive and come hang out for the afternoon and if you bring a friend with you who's not a knitter they can sit and listen to the music read a book enjoy. or learn to knit yeah that too <laughs> Hint, hint. All right. Should we call this an episode? I think so. Yeah. Because your family's probably getting restless and want some dinner or something. Probably. Yeah. The ki That's the stove right there on the other side of that wall. So They've been forbidden, <laughs> forget, forbidden for banging any pots and pans. Don't shut the door. No pans. <laughs> anyway, guys, it's been great. Erin, it's been great. Good to see you. I hope you, however you're celebrating this season, I hope you enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, keep celebrating. And uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye.